lives and we think, you know, I don't want to miss anything down here. I want to have fun. I want my life to be fun and exciting. Let me tell you something. Living for God is one of the most fun and exciting things I've ever done. Hallelujah. Oh, hear me. I can go out on a Saturday night and have fun like we did last night and wake up on Sunday morning without a hangover. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell somebody this morning, amen, that the time But you see, time, that elusive creature, amen, many times creeps up on us. I was telling somebody a few days ago, we were talking about them, they were in their 30s. And they were whining about being 30, <laughs> hallelujah. I said, well, you better enjoy 30. Because it's only a short hop from 30 to where I'm at. There you go, bro. Hallelujah. Twice 30, I'm 60. But I can promise you from 30 to 60, you move twice as fast as from 1 to 30 did. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know why it is? It's because we don't really have a unique concept of time. And as we begin to progress in our lives and we begin to become more involved with the things of the world, of course, the first, uh, when you're uh, in between the 1 and 30 mark, the first 18 years or so of your life, you're being raised. Amen? And, and during that time, somebody's providing for you. During that time, you don't have to worry about getting up and going to work in the morning and making a living just so you can eat. Amen? You don't have to worry about where the money's coming from to pay the bills. Hallelujah. Because you're, you're being taken care of. But then all of a sudden life has this horrible way of coming in on us. Amen. And, uh, you know, we, we get married and, and, and we begin to set up our own home and then we have our children and and life begins to get a little tougher and uh, we begin to work a little harder and, and we begin to reach out and do a little more, <clears throat> amen, to try to provide for our family. And, and that's, that's all well and good and that's all something that has to happen in life. But before you know it, it's all gone and you, you're, you're, you're 60 or you're 70 years old and you're looking back and you're thinking, where did my time go? What, what, what did I do with the time that I had? I, I spent it all on me. I spent it all on things of this world. But somewhere in that length of time that I've been on earth, I've never really built a relationship with God. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the uniqueness of time is, amen, that before you know it, it's gone. Amen. And you're standing at that river. Maybe your health has failed. And maybe you're in a hospital bed or, or maybe you're in a nursing home or, or if you're fortunate, maybe you're living in a uh, in an assisted living center or you're living with one of your children or whatever it may be but uh, that time has come when everything in your life that really you thought counted now counts for nothing it's, it, it's to that point in time where this moment that I'm living in I, I, I'm looking at my days and I'm thinking how many more days do I have left in this situation? How many more days will I uh, be here on this earth? And, uh, and maybe you, you, you 
you uh, contract a dreaded disease of some sort and, and you understand the doctor says you've only got uh, six months or three months or whatever it is to live and, and, and so it actually sets a time period for you uh, and you understand uh, I So at the present, I said a while ago as I, as I read that article to you, amen, that right now is already gone. Uh, this second just went by. You can't crash that and bring it back. It's already gone. You can't reform that. But you can, amen, dedicate and consecrate yourself unto your God like you never have before. Oh, let me tell somebody here this morning something. Amen, just because you're still young. Amen, just because you're maybe in your, what we call middle ages. Amen, just because, amen, you still got life ahead of you. Doesn't mean, amen, that you're going to live it all out. That doesn't mean that the Lord may not come for you the next minute. Oh, hear me tonight. I'm telling somebody, amen, that God is desiring us that we would quit being so carnal and we would start growing close to him. Amen. God's desire is to have a people that love the Lord with everything that's within them. But you see, we got time. Oh, we. Brother Driscoll, I got time. You know, I'm still young, and I, I've got plenty of time. Hallelujah. I read, I read to you in Ecclesiastes the different seasons of your life. Basically, everything I read to you is everything that happens in a normal lifetime. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. And there's a time to be born. There's a time to die. Hallelujah. Time to plant. Time to harvest. Amen. Those are things that happen in life. Time to kill, time to heal. Time to break down, time to build up, time to weep, time to laugh. Time to mourn, time to dance. Each one of those things that I read you out of Proverbs is something that happens at this second. And then it's no more. Unless it happens again further down the road. Many of those instances that I read to you will happen over and over again in your life. Amen. There will be times of mourning in your life as loved ones die and leave you. As incidents happen in your life that you don't plan. Every single second of your life, something is happening. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you, you're here this morning because you, you planned on being here. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you plan in the future. This is the future you thought about last time. Hallelujah. In the morning, I'm going to church. That was a future thought. This morning you got up, you got ready, it was still a future thought because church was still a ways away. You drove to the church, now you're here. That time's gone. Hallelujah. 
the, the thing is, time has so many different effects on us. Amen. But by the same token, you have an effect on the time that God has allotted you. Hallelujah. Amen. You can determine how your future is. Hallelujah. You can determine what's going to happen before you get there. All right. I know in our lives, of course, for some crazy reason, doctor visits have been a thing now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Never been to a doctor in my life up till about maybe 10 years ago. And uh, now it seems like I can't, I can't stop. Hallelujah. Yep. But go to the doctor's office. They do whatever they're going to do, do their little exam, talk to you. Then they tell you, I'm going to set you an appointment for three weeks from now. So you know you're going to be back in there three weeks from now. Well, at least you assume you are. See, our future is built on our assumption that we're going to be here. Hallelujah. Yeah. So still, time is an elusive thing because we plan our future out and we think, you know, this is what I'm going to do. Do you remember the scripture uh, where the Lord gave the story of the man that uh, he had the big barns built and he said, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm just going to sit back in my big easy chair. I'm going to keep the lazy boy back and I'm going to tell those guys, y'all go tear those barns down and build me some bigger barns because I've got a lot more stuff to put in them. I, I've got so much more than I had. And, and he, you know what the problem was with him? He hasn't even thought about that his time can end and there's an eternity on the other side. That's it. The problem that he had was he was building for the current. That's it. Hallelujah. So his proposal for his future was not I'm not going to worry about the barns, but I'm going to go find God. I, I, I'm through with, with getting all the, uh, uh, the physical things taken care of. Uh, those crops that are in the field, I can just give them away to friends and neighbors and, and help somebody else out. And uh, I'm just going to spend the rest of my life serving God. That was nowhere in his thoughts. Amen. Obviously, he was carnal minded. And obviously, the only thing he thought about was making the living and, and building the bigger barns and becoming a little richer in this world. But you hear what the word of God said? Thou fool, this night, not tomorrow, you don't really have a future. This night, thy soul will be required of thee. Oh, hear me today. Amen. We need to understand. We, we can plan but right now is the most important moment we've got. Amen. This moment, this past by. Amen. The next moment is the most important that we have. We need to make it up in our mind and in our heart that this moment is a moment that I'm going to serve God. Oh, I'm not going to play church. I'm not going to halfway do this, but I'm going to learn how to pray. I'm going to learn how to of everything my family does. Because you see, time is one of those things that we have no control over. That's it. Like I read to you off the internet when I typed in the word, what is time? Nobody actually has an answer. Not even God has an answer. 
what do you mean not even God? Because God is timeless. He is eternal. Before this universe was, he was. After this universe is gone, he'll still be God. Hallelujah. Nothing will change that. He is timeless. He, he has been here for eons, and he'll be here for eons longer. They have figured out, and, 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 and this is one thing I noticed as I read after different physicists this morning, amen, as I was studying for this, and that is that uh, they, they, they can put an arrow. They call it the time arrow. <laughs> And, and, and in that time arrow, they can go back to certain points in time. And, and, and they can say, this is where the arrow starts. But I'm here to tell somebody this morning, amen, that your arrow started the day you were born in this physical realm. Huh? Amen. And, and your arrow goes on uh, to a certain point. And then on this earth, that arrow breaks free. And no longer are you bound by time. Oh, but what are you doing, amen, with that? That space. If you ever go out to a cemetery, there are, are two dates on every tombstone out there. And one date is the date that you were born. And the other date is the date that you die. What really counts is the little dash in the middle. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Because that is this second. There you go. That dash is this second. Hallelujah. I mean, you're in church this morning. You're, you're, you're sitting here. Oh, the sound of my voice. You're listening to a preacher preach. And, and you felt the spirit of God in this place. And I, I'm feeling his anointing right now. But I, I want somebody to understand this morning that this moment is the most important moment in your life. Some of us have not really been real with God. Oh, yeah, we go through the park. Amen. We go to church. We show up. We do our thing. We, we, we show God that we're really sensitive here, but yet we struggle all through the week and we have problems in our mind thinking maybe this isn't the right way. Maybe, oh, come on, don't tell me you don't. I'm telling you what I feel in the Holy Ghost this morning. There's a struggle going on, but I'm here to tell somebody you need to make it up in your mind that every minute of every day you're going to serve God. Every minute of every day you're It's not just a passing thing. It's not just something that's a fleeting glimpse. That one second I am and the next second I'm not. Time is elusive. I, I, I can't put my finger on time. I can tell you, I can't, my wife can. <laughs> she can tell you whenever one of our kids was born to the, to the minute. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can't, I was there. But I didn't experience the pain. <laughs> I guess pain makes you memorize clocks. I'm not sure. But I can promise you one thing. She can tell you every moment. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Every child was born, she knows to the exact minute. Amen. She'll say, Sandy was born at 4.01 a.m. 4.08. 4.08. Right. Amen. And Candace was born at 6.37. I mean, yeah, 4.04 p.m. 4.04 p.m. See there. She knows. I don't remember all that. Amen. But that very moment that that baby let out its first cry and came into this world, their timeline 